You want a GY6 Ruckus that looks like this on a budget? Check it. Welcome back, you guys. Episode 4 of the GY6 Honda Ruckus Build Series. About to go down. If you haven't watched any other episodes, you gotta go back, otherwise you're gonna be totally lost. In this episode, we're gonna put that GY6 engine in the Honda Ruckus. If you're unfamiliar about the GY6, we pulled the 49cc out, put the 150cc engine in. It's about three times the power of the stock motor. Really wakes it up. It makes it a lot more fun to ride and more usable. So here I've got my Ruckus frame. I'm ready to install the motor. Gonna go with this JDM engine mount. Complete billet aluminum, anodized black. They also come in different colors, silver and red. It also comes with this linkage. This is a sweet kit because it's completely adjustable. Another cool thing about this is it, do, it only requires you to grind off one little tab. On the top of this mount, I just need to get all of these loose so I can take off the top clamp here. Because this is a two-piece clamp. So this cross frame is where I grinded off the little U that held the cable. Very, very simple. I also did a little touch-up paint, mainly just so it doesn't rust. So what I need to do is I've got this mount, and I've got the top pulled off. I'm just gonna put this on there like this, really lightly, real loose. Once I have everything in place, then of course I'm gonna red Loctite everything, but right now, I wanna be able to uh, move this mount around. It's gotta be loose enough so that I can move it around and things like that. So I've got that mount on there, and then we've got this guy. This kind of this is the old shock mount, so I'm just gonna place it like that. So here's your original shock bolt. You'll be using that, but notice that there's a uh, a lot of play back and forth. You once you get your uh, adjustment correct, you're gonna want to fill these up with a, a spacer slash washers. So we'll just let that sit there for now. Like I said, this mount is completely adjustable. You can move it uh, to the left, to, to the right, to get it right. And then you can also move it back and forward to get the perfect stance. Here's kind of the side profile of this shock setup. It's pretty, freaking pretty sweet. And now we can move our mount forward and back like this, this way and this way. We can move it all around. Same with the shock mount. And then you've got this linkage here. So you've got two different bolts, a longer bolt and a shorter bolt. And you gotta be careful not for these not to fall out. Everything is gonna go in here real nice and loose for right now. And we'll come back around and Loctite everything once we have our perfect position here. So I'm just gonna screw this in all the way. Notice that thing just kind of pivots. And then you got this little cap where your original motor mount was held. And You've got the longer bolt here, and you're gonna slide this through where the motor mount was. So I have everything lightly installed, and I can adjust the stretch by unscrewing or screw, screwing in or screwing out this tie rod. And there's some locking nuts on each end. So that'll adjust the stretch. How far do you want it to be stretched? The other cool thing is if you have an eight inch or a seven inch tire, you can move the, the mount in back and forth just like this along with the shock. You've got play here, and then you've got a few different adjustments up at the top. I'll go into that in more detail. But uh, everything's kind of loose right now. We want to put the motor in, center the wheel, and, and then we'll start tightening up stuff up and red Loctite on everything. I'm about to put this uh, motor in, and I want to put the shock in. This shock, I know that for a fact I'm going to need to space it. I'm just going to start bringing this jack down, just kind of like getting it roughly where we need to. Now we're ready to put this engine bolt in. Make sure you put a uh, washer on one side and then slide it through. It takes a little uh, wiggling to figure out exactly where you're where you need to be. There we go. I'm going to put the other, a washer on the other side and then the nut. 
Now I'm not applying red Loctite to this because this is already a lock nut. Let's put this sucker on real nice and easy so we don't scratch the paint. There we go. Let's go ahead and put some red Loctite on the threads. I'm probably gonna put some washers behind here, otherwise they're gonna wrinkle the paint, so I'll do that. Now I got washers on there. So hopefully it doesn't wrinkle the paint. You'll need to torque these down as well once you're able to get the brake, the rear brake on there so you can so the wheel doesn't spin. So I'm I measured and marked right in the middle of the frame. And I'm using this line as a reference, and it is perfect. Perfect on there. So I'm gonna start to crank this down. So I'm gonna loosen one of these and then put red Loctite. Start Loctiting everything. Cranking this guy down, pulling that bolt out, putting red Loctite on it, getting all the whole mount, this here. I'm gonna have to put a spacer in here. This is where it wants to be. Put a, a couple spacer, meaning a couple washers to fill up that space. Same with the right here. Um, see the shock straight up and down as well. So I'm gonna do that off camera to get all this mounted up. I just wanted to show you, you know, how to set it up basically. This moves back and forth. I can. I have these tightened down, but I could spin this to push the wheel back further if I want, or the wheel back in if I want. But you can only go so far because you might hit this here, depending on your shock height. So all of these things, you can adjust it, fine tune it. This is why this mount is pretty cool. And the, uh, the style of it is just sweet. Like, look at that. So another little adjustment to be made is you could lower your shock or raise it however you want. There's quite a bit of adjustment there. I was kind of, I'm kind of matching it with the front tire, like the wheel well space with the front tire. So once you have it uh, locked in, you can tighten it down with a spanner wrench. The other thing uh, I should mention, I've grinded that away just slightly because it will hit the engine case right when you mount it. So it's just like a custom thing that you have to do so that uh, you don't have any, anything's making any contact or anything like that. Everything is uh, spaced back here real nice. Um, you notice I've taken the um, breather hose for the transmission, kind of ran it through this hole and pointed it down. I got the same thing going right here. I'm, I normally zip tie this above the air filter, so I'll just leave that for now. This is tight, everything is tight, and remember you can adjust this shock. It's not as low as it can go right now. It can go lower, and it can be stretched out further if we wanted to. Okay, now we're ready for this brake cable, so we can unscrew that. I'm not gonna use that because I'm gonna do a little surprise for Hannah. This is a gal's bike that we're working on. I'll put a little uh, smiley face in there. So this goes, pull this off by the way, and then this slides through the little hole back there, little hole, and then you got a spring, and then the smiley face, Ah, oh, it's not going to work, got to use the original one, dang, I'll pull the rear brake, but this is going to go right like that in this little mount here. Keep that away from the hitting the, the rim there. And then I'll just need to adjust the brake accordingly. The bike has a nice stance. I'm gonna uh, leave these wires. These wires will come off when we do the wiring harness. Um, I still need to do the exhaust and the uh, carburetor intake, stuff like that. I'm gonna leave all this open for the uh, wiring harness, but our chassis is pretty much done. I just got done uh, cranking down the lug nuts. Um, because I was able to hold the brake. So our intake manifold's backwards. We won't be able to fit this carburetor in there. It's pretty big. So this uh, intake needs to be flipped around. 
pull this off of here. So this is what we're gonna need to mount our carburetor to clock it. See, there's our normal studs, but then if you flip it over, slide it over a little bit, see how that it's clocked. That'll get our carburetor angled correctly. But if you notice, there's a big problem here because plastic is actually touching. So we need to Dremel around here to get this thing to slide down. So I'm just marking it. We get this thing uh, Dremeled out. We're gonna wanna put tape over that. Intake, we don't want shrapnel down there. There we go. Now we know that it fits, I need to get these um, studs off of here. Screw your original 10 millimeter nut upside down and the other one right on top of it. And take a 10 millimeter. Basically you're gonna tighten them down together like this. Okay, and then back it out. Just like that. Little Loctite on the bolts. And then you got your carburetor and your intake on there. Slide that down. Then you can put your uh, the 10 millimeter nuts back on. This is what our carburetor setup ends up looking like. I had to come back later, I had a bunch of trial and error. It just didn't look proper. So there's a, these are all gonna come in the kit. So as far as this carburetor setup goes, I do not use this wire. See, see that hose? I don't use this hose. So I take this, since we're gonna be using the stock fuel pump, just take this hose off the carburetor. These here, you can just loop this. So we're good there. And as far as this bracket goes, and we're gonna flip this one around. I've got the uh, one bolt holding on, that one wedges up against, and then uh, stock cable ran around, back down. Okay, so I have oiled this filter up because when it gets wet, you don't want it to suck in water. Just crank that down. I just uh, lightly lubed it with uh, like WD-40. Fuel line, go down to the original clamp, through here, back in to the carburetor. Perfect. One thing you need to make sure of is you have free play. So if I go back down under here, I've got free play before the throttle actually turns and when you let go, it snaps back. Very important, it's a safety thing. So here's our side profile. I'm gonna put this sucker on. Uh, red Loctite on the bolts, of course. This is a little bit different than when, what comes in the kit, this uh, lowered seat pan, but we can always adjust your order to whatever you want. So here's our kind of profile. It sits a lot higher than most, but I wanted to match this front wheel because we're not lowering the shocks. We have the ability to lower it and stretch it even more, of course, by lowering the shock a lot more. See, we've got a lot more here we can do. And then we can also uh, extend our rod to make it a, you know more stretched. Uh, but I wanted to show you before I forget, the uh, the head breather, valve, valve cover breather, goes back in, see I've got it kind of wrapped around the carb here, into the intake. So any um, oil mist goes back into the engine, just like the stock setup. So an exhaust system doesn't come in this kit. Um, of course I have an exhaust system. I'm not gonna film it just because the exhaust system is so specialty to what you choose. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'll get back to you when this exhaust is installed. This exhaust is pretty sweet, huh? Def this one requires some custom stuff. Looks decent though, nice exhaust. All right, flip your seat up. So now it's time to install 
the tail light. I've kind of uh, got this ready. I've mounted this tail light to this bracket that it comes with, and I clipped all the connectors off and put bullet connectors because it doesn't come that way. But this is going to go on just like this. And see these little holes here? You're just going to line it up straight. Looks pretty centered right there. All right, our tail light is installed. Now we got to start plugging in here. White to black with the brown stripe, orange to blue, green with the black stripe to black, blue to yellow, green with the yellow stripe to red. We're not using this two pin, this two uh, dual for the blinkers. We're not using that. The tail light already has its own ground. That's like a dual ground. So let's pull this up under here like this. Just like this. And then you can, it kind of goes like that. You can zip tie it too if you want. I'm gonna kind of zip tie a bunch of this or kind of crimp a bunch of this up under here because we're not gonna need that. That used to go to our little, little emission control. We won't use that anymore. So close that down. I gotta put a new battery in. I recommend a lithium battery. So here's our old gel battery. I already pulled these uh, terminals off. It's already kind of loose actually. Normal battery. Now the lithium battery is a little bit smaller and weighs like nothing compared to this thing. A little bit smaller, a lot more cold cranking amps. It just slides in there. Comes with all the, the comes with all these different like foam pads. So you'll need to uh, kind of add some pads in there. The cool thing is, is it's got the little, uh, you know, like this is, this is tape basically. See that, that just peels off. That'll just go down like that, but I should probably wipe that off. And that'll stick in there forever. Hit the brake, hit the brake light, left blinker, right blinker, which it doesn't blink because we need to do LED flasher unit. So I have my like headlight blinker set up sitting right here. If I turn my key on, now they have power, and go right blinker or left blinker, you notice they don't blink. That's because we need to change out our flasher unit. So here's our flasher unit. This is not made for LED blinkers. And we have rear LED. I've got this uh, LED flasher unit that comes in the kit. It also comes with two leads. This is not a plug and play setup, which I wish it was. It's just trying to find a connector that, that matches this. It's not easy. I'm just gonna cut it off. Splice the ends. Squeeze that. Okay, there's a B on here, black to black. There's an L that goes to silver. I turn the blinkers on. They blink. So I can adjust this knob by turning it. I can make it faster or slower. And then I just kind of mounted it real nicely there. I want to let you guys know something kind of cool. We have this as a digital download on our website so you can like literally download this whole video series. Not just the one you watch, the whole entire build onto your iPad, computer, whatever you want. You can click the link down below. I'll put it down in the description. Or you can go to rollingwrenchdenver.com and you can just buy the video or that'll help support us, of course. Or if you buy the whole entire GY6 stretch kit, it comes for free. So I appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you in the next video.